Hello, my name is Carrie Wester. I'm the Assistant Production Editor for the Journal of Microbiology and Biology Education, also known as JIMBY. Today we'll be speaking with three science educators about their writing process, the challenges they face in that writing process, and the support they seek throughout their publishing journey. Today we have Marcy Kelly from Pace University. We have Cynthia Miller from University of Louisville and John Geyser from Western Michigan University. Thank you all for being here today. So we've all been trained as scientists in various biology disciplines. Um, how do you transition from scientific writing to science education writing, Marcy? Well, the process of scientific writing and science education writing are t pretty similar. Um, the main difference between the two is that typically science education writing takes a little bit longer than writing for a scientific research paper. And the reason that that is the case is because writing for science education usually requires that you run your study multiple times and sometimes the courses for which you run that study occur once during an academic year. So you may write up the results after the first run of the course, revise the manuscript during the year, and then after the second run of the course, revise it again with the new results prior to submitting it. Okay, thank you. And John, same question. How did you become involved in science education writing? I've always been interested in teaching and, and learning to teach well, but it wasn't really until I came here to the Biology Scholars Program Research Residency that I realized I can take the skills that I've learned as a researcher in the lab and move them into the classroom, learn how my students are thinking, what they're trying to accomplish, and how they go about the process of learning to actually do better things for them, incorporate new techniques for them, and then actually publish the research that I've done. Great. Cynthia, I know you've published some work. Um, what is your motivation for writing, and can you tell us a little bit about your writing process? Sure. So when I started at UofL, I was in a tenure track position, and so publishing was really an essential part of that new job. And I was also just really excited to start to systematically assess my own teaching so that I could best help my students. Mm -hmm. As far as the writing, I make sure to set carefully designed deadlines for my work, and I have a colleague that helps to keep me on task with those deadlines. Great. And John, same to you. Do you have a specific writing process that you follow? Yeah, I realized early on that I had a hard time making writing a priority. So the only way that I could actually accomplish writing was to find a partner, schedule the time to do it. Usually in the morning it works best for me, usually between 9 and 12, and spend that time being held accountable by that partner or partners to actually get my writing done. Accountability is key, right? It is, very key. Cynthia, can you tell us a little bit about the challenges you face in the writing process and what support you seek to overcome them? Sure. So when I first started doing this type of research, I had a pretty extensive background in research design, but I wasn't quite sure how to transform that into writing for educational journals. So the Biology Scholars Transitions Residency was really an essential component of teaching me how to revise my writing skills. And then after the residency, I followed up a lot with my facilitator who was able to help me, particularly with responding to reviewer concerns and how to best revise my paper from there. Great. Marcy, same question. What challenges do you face and what support do you seek? I think the biggest challenge for me in my writing process is actually finding time to dedicate to write. So I usually look at my schedule and try and find larger chunks of time to sit down and really dedicate to the writing process. Marcy, as Jim B's research editor, where do you see authors typically struggle and what advice do you give them? Typically authors sometimes are not aware of whether or not they should submit their article to a journal, so I would suggest they reach out to the editor with a copy of the abstract and get advice from the editor as to whether or not that abstract is a good fit for that journal. Um, for Jimby, I would also advise authors to go to the website for the journal because there are a lot of tips and tutorials there to help authors position their manuscript accurately. In addition, we pride ourselves at Jimby for providing authors with extensive feedback on their manuscripts um, and we welcome authors to contact us with questions with respect to the feedback in order to ensure that the manuscript is a good fit for the journal. Great. Thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, for more information on Jimby, including author guidelines and author tutorials, please visit jimby.asm.org.